We can do it like this all day, hey, don't stop. Inhibitions run away, hey, don't stop. Let a bug hit windshield. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Slap Happy. My name is Civilian, aka Sav, and I am the host of Slap Happy. This is my podcast where I dive into all things, all things, primarily music, uh, but I like to have little conversations with people from different sectors and different industries. And I also like I also I also like to gas bag a little bit about some of the things that I've learned and seen in this industry, slash my life, slash comma, whatever you want to say after that. Anyway, this one is a little detour or a divert or diversion, divert from the uh, regular programming, which has been me interviewing people from uh, particularly the music industry, rappers, friends of mine, uh, but also other sectors as well, including Nate from Itch Pig, who I interviewed last week. I'll link that below. You can check that out. Um, this one's a little diversion. This is me talking about a topic that has come to my attention very recently using an anecdote from last week. And it goes like this. Last week, I um, so just for, for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm a hip hop artist. I'm a rapper. And I've been basically writing and performing music for well over 12 years maybe even going on to 14 and beyond could be 15 I don't know it's been a long time um I've played tons of shows I've met lots of people from all walks of life and all skill sets and all backgrounds um some of them really 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 talented like literally the top of the chain some of them just kind of starting out and everywhere in between I've shared stages I've got people on stages um I've supported I've opened I've headlined I've done basically all of it um and one thing, uh, and so that's kind of one caveat. The other caveat is I currently work for, as a booking agent, um, a bar called, or a venue called Laundry Bar. It's in Melbourne, uh, in Fitzroy, really well known for its, uh, you know, reputation for hip hop music and its support of hip hop music over, you know, 12 years now. So they're the two little caveats. One, I'm, I'm kind of been doing this for a while. And two, I work for this venue that has a really strong reputation for really good hip hop. So... Last week, Onyx, uh, famous uh, hip-hop group from the kind of late 80s, early 90s. These guys were literally and are literally one of the biggest names in hip-hop. They are goats, OGs, dons, whatever you want to call it. These guys are absolute living legends. They're nearly 50 years old now. Anyway, they came to play Laundry Bar uh, last week. They played two shows in, uh, back-to-back Wednesday night, Thursday night, both sold out. And I went to check them out on the Wednesday night. Now, I've never been a like a huge Onyx fan. I've, I obviously know of them. I know of the era that they came from. And being a fan of hip-hop, I am a fan of them. I'm just not a huge fan. I don't know all the songs. I don't know all the lyrics and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't followed their, you know, their, their journey very closely or anything. Um, but, you know, know and respect what they do and what they've done. Right. So I go to Laundry Bar next, uh, last week and they're playing, right? Laundry bar holds about 300 people. Not, not the hugest venue, but it's like, it's, it's sizable, right? They, they pretty much had, you know, both nights sold out, jam-packed. These guys get up on stage, no vocals in their backing track, okay? It's just literally an instrumental and their voices. That's it. That's everything. There's no big production. There's no, there's not 58 guys on stage. There's no... Uh, auto tune. There's no effects. There's nothing. There's literally just the voices, two voices, two mics, and an instrumental. Now, they absolutely rocked it harder than I've ever seen anyone ever rock that stage. They killed it. Absolute class from start to finish. Okay, that's the first point. The second point. So professional on stage, right? The second point. They have been marketing this show, like supporting it, um, talking about it, getting people interested from over in the States. They've been talking about it for like five or six months. Basically, as soon as the show got booked, they started talking about it. Hey, guys, we're going to be in Australia. Hey, guys, we're going to be in Australia. Hey, guys, we're coming to Melbourne. Hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys. Letting people know, doing stuff on on their own Instagram, on their own Facebook. They've been doing stuff to push the show because they wanted as many Australian fans at that show as they could get, right? So they cared, right? So first thing, professional on stage. Second thing, professional in terms of marketing. That's pretty much it. Um, Those two things really genuinely stood out to me about Onyx. Now, 
the reason I'm privy to that information about their marketing and the way that they kind of like push the show is because obviously I work for a laundry bar. I got this and I just was tapped in and I got to see them decide to push the show with a very clear intent. Like they cared. They wanted people at the show. I say that. I say those two things specifically because day in and day out, I see the exact opposite from 90% of acts who have done minuscule amounts of things in this industry slash life compared to Onyx, right? Now, one argument is like, yeah, they've been doing it for 30 years. Surely, you know, that's they should be doing that. Like, that's an expectation. I would all, I would, yes, you could argue that, but I would also argue that they are nearly 50 years old. They don't have to do anything. They have earned the right and like you could also argue that like once you have reached that echelon of like professionalism and you know um, it is inherent or is built into you that ethic that work ethic is built into you. Now they come from like they come from New York. They are hip hop through and through. They care about the culture. They respect the culture. They they just you know they live and breathe this stuff and they have their entire lives. Um, Actually, the third thing I'd say is their interaction with their fans. They stayed after the shows. They took photos. They uh, did meet and greets. They they really wanted to interact and get to know the people of Melbourne that had come out to spend their hard-earned cash and watch them, et cetera, et cetera. Now, those three, th- th- three things, before the show marketing, on the stage, professionalism and, and performance, after the show, um, the you know talking to the fans and, and, and being genuine like that. Those three things I do not see nearly enough of in the Australian uh, hip-hop industry as it stands right now. Now, I would say, uh, I, you know, I, I, it's not like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for like, you know, specific kind of like way of doing things. I understand that everyone has their own challenges, their own kind of framework, their own things that they've come from and they're working through and they're working towards. Like there's different levels of like, you know, outgoingness and charisma. Like there's different levels of confidence. There's different levels of like exposure. Like I'm not saying that like there is one size fits all, but I am saying there should be always a higher level of expectation that we should be striving toward, right? Now, a lot of People in this industry do not do barely enough, right? I see so many people who get like headline shows booked at Laundry Bar or um, or anywhere really um, and they don't market the show. They don't fucking care. They don't put a post up on their socials. They, they don't talk about it until literally the day before. And it's like, why? Why don't you do that? Why? Why can't you just talk about the show and go like, hey, I'm actually really... Like at the end of the day, like... I don't care how many fucking streams you got on Spotify. I don't care how many playlists you've been in. Like, it is a privilege to get on stage. It is a privilege to play for those people. It is a privilege to 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 write a song that people come and spend their hard-earned money to watch you play, right? That is a privilege. That always has been and it always will be. Now... Uh, I'm kind of over the like little rock star thing that people are doing at the moment where they feel like, you know, their notoriety or their Spotify plays is enough. It's not enough. Like do more, do more, support, support the people who support you, push your shows, talk like you care, show up like you care, play like you care. That's what Onyx did. Onyx played like they cared man their fucking their performance was just out of this world I, and i'm not look there's there's kind of like this this part where it's like the marketing and like pushing your show and like getting people to show up but there's this part as well where it's like um perform like you care like get on stage and give 128 percent. like onyx bro like obviously professionals have been doing the same set for like i mean they've been doing a you know, they've been doing, they've been rehearsing a similar set for like a really long time and, you know, together and, you know, they do this day in and day out. So it's clear that it would come with a certain level of um, professionalism. However, they still, they didn't miss a beat. They moved up and down, like side to side on the stage, backward, forward. They moved with so much like charisma and class it was just like an absolute joy to watch. Like I fucking loved it. I loved it so much. And I loved the fact that it was just them and their beat. That's it. Just them and their beat. That's it. 
just voice and beat, their voice is obviously very distinct, right? They've been crafting those and honing those over a really long period of time. And they've had time to work on all, all this, the breath control, the 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 um, the enactments, the entertainment, you know, the, they're showmen. At the end of the day, they're entertainers. So I, I do understand that, all that and I take all that in 100%. I'm not saying that like, you know, you play your first show and you're expected to be perfect because no one, no one's going to be that. I am just saying... Right, boil everything that I've just said down to this one sentence. We can do better. And I will start to expect of myself and of the people that I book and of the shows that I'm participating in that people are doing better. We always can be better. We always can be striving to be better performers, to be better marketers, to be better engagers, to be better uh, leaders of our fans to be better to our fans. We can always be better. And I, I, I am going to like enforce that expectation on myself and on my team, Ruku and 30. I'm going to enforce that expectation on us. And hopefully, hopefully that permeates out into the rest of, uh, you know, at least our local scene. And who knows? I, look, I, I, I will say that there are a lot of people in Melbourne who do really give a fuck. Like I, I know a lot of guys in Melbourne um, that, that I'm friends with. Uh, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Kill Carter, Jimmy Harwood, dressed off the top of my head. Um, those guys, you know, are examples, a legend, you know. Those guys are, are examples of people who really care about the details. Every single moment, they care. They're showing up. They care. It's like a constant, like, um, you know, they're, they're just always showing up. They're always really trying to make sure that they're pushing that envelope in the right way. Now, those, those, four, those four people that I mentioned really, really, um, you know, on the right track and doing the right things, right? But even they could be better. Like everyone can be better. Everyone can be better. I'm holding, I'm trying to hold myself to this same standard as well. Like I, I know I can be better. Um, the only way that our industry gets better, the only way that our industry goes to that elite level and like, don't get me wrong, we are definitely pushing there. Um, we are definitely on our way. There are definitely people who are doing like some incredible, incredible shit. But the only way, like I would say chilling it is a perfect example of someone who's at the top who who does not, he doesn't fucking let up. He's always marketing. He's always pushing his stuff. He's, always, he's going on tour. He's talking about it. He's uh, communicating with his fans. When he gets on stage, he fucking brings it. Like as far as I've, I haven't seen him live, but I'm assuming uh, based on the content that I've seen. You know, he, he's an example of one person that's like really, really giving it all the time. Like not letting up. Level of professionalism. Always high. Just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Showing up. Um, you know, and I just think we should all be striving for that. You know, and I think um, the, the the Onyx example has really highlighted to me that you don't spend 30 years in an industry without that, okay? A lot of these people that are just showing up, they're like, you know, I did something cool once so I can just show up and like, you know, uh, phone it in kind of thing. That ain't it, you know, show up and then show up again and then show up again because if you care about it, you'll do that. If you care about it, you will do that. You'll show up and you show up and you'll show up. Um, yeah, but that's that's a little rant that I just kind of, uh, you know, I thought about. And it's this is not from a negative place. I really, I really want to emphasize that this is not from a negative place. It's just this, it's just seeing what's possible. It's seeing what's possible and it's, and it's the awareness to go, we aren't there and we better not rest on our laurels because we have the potential to get there. We just need to keep pushing it and we need to keep pushing each other, right? This is or this is a whole Australian industry. Our um, bar needs to keep getting raised all the time for us to compete internationally because if, you know, as the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all ships, okay? And I'm trying to make sure that all ships get lifted in the right direction. Like that's that's what we want. We want everyone to go up. We want everyone to grow. Um, yeah, anyway. My name is Civilian Sav. Uh, this is my podcast, Slab Happy. Really hope you've enjoyed this little uh, two cents. If you uh, if you liked it, drop a comment. Let me know what you thought. Do you have any feedback on this? Uh, do you have any anecdotes of your own? Are you an artist that this resonated with? Are you an artist that this kind of like, you know, you feel offended by it? Whatever. Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm happy to continue the conversation down in the comments. But yeah. 
let's uh let's push each other let's be strong let's be better and um yeah let's keep fucking growing uh thanks guys uh my name is civilian i'll catch you next week i've got a really dope podcast coming next week by the way um super super happy with this one super great guest i really like this guy and i think you'll love this podcast so yeah tune in next week super dope podcast coming at coming at you and and yeah like like comment and subscribe do that good stuff now and i'll catch you next week on slap happy let's go we can do it like this all day hey don't stop inhibitions run away hey don't stop let a bug hit windshield it's great though.